Welcome, everyone, to another episode of The Dads of Jacobah. I'm joined here with Jar Jar Binks himself, Sean Gilmore. I will say that I think of our, the two of us, I maybe am the bigger Jar Jar Binks apologist. Yeah, you, you stand Jar Jar, don't you? Yes, yeah, I do. Last Darth week was Jar the episode. Jar. Jar Jar was redeemed. Um, and Jar Jar confirmed uh, to be in this season or next season of Mandalorian. I don't see why he wouldn't be. I mean, that TikTok you sent me seems like you're pretty convinced. Yeah, Keller and Beck saves Grogu, rushes to some sort of landing pad where there's a the Naboo Royal Guard with a, a Naboo cruiser. I'm like, and he's like, I got some friends that I can, a friend that can help us out. Like, who? None other than the the former senator... Sith Lord. Representative from Naboo that gave Palpatine Chancellor emergency powers. Waving his hands around. Jar Jar Binks. Um, If you also stand Jar Jar, last week was your week. If you stand good uh, content, then this was your week. So. Last last week was good content. <laughs> I had to differentiate it somehow. Um, we'll be talking about two weeks of The Mandalorian today because someone was on vacation and didn't want to do this. <laughs> so, uh, and someone didn't want to get a guest host. So take that, Shane. <laughs> Sean didn't even <laughs> want to have you on. Uh, that's just jokes. Um, so let's talk about last week first. Sean, remind me what happened last week because I have forgotten other than the escape from Order 66. There was more to the episode than that. Most of the episode, if not all the episode, really was the these this Mandalorian covert and Bo-Katan. Oh, and we, we picked back up because remember at the end of three weeks ago, the end of the episode, Bo-Katan was also redeemed and like accepted into this clan. And so we see... The Mandalorian's kind of training and stuff like that. We see Grogu get challenged, or Mando basically saying, you've got to fight the other foundlings. <laughs> that uh, was a bit weird. And then he was Yoda flipping all around that place. Why didn't that other kid just shoot three times at once as well? I agree. <laughs> flip, flip, flip. <laughs> they made uh, sure to make that clear. You can shoot as many times as you want. Anyway. Um, and then it was like that chase scene, another large monster on the planet with no, I, how, who was supporting this ecosystem? We have alpha predators and literally nothing else on the planet that I've well, seen. Well, now we know what the giant crocodile dinosaurs in the water, what they eat. They eat the big raptor <laughs> no, pterodactyls. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I mean, that was a scene right out of Jurassic Park where that yeah. thing comes out of the water and eats that thing. There's always a bigger fish. Yep. So I feel like a lot of that episode was obviously uh, Paz Vizsla's kid gets taken, abducted by the giant raptor. And like swallowed? Was he just inside the raptor the whole yeah. time? Yeah, that was... Interesting. And someone else brought this up to me. What's up with the jetpacks? Do they not have a fuel gauge or any sort of indicator? They're just flying and then, kew, 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 kew. oh, I'm out. Like, that doesn't seem like a very safe system they have there. And was it a full tank when they left? Like, they burned through the entire thing or they were like on a quarter of a tank? They're like, I should have filled up before I left. <laughs> you would think they would have some sort of technology to like switch out a fuel pack or something to be like let me just fill this baby up portable listen what i don't understand is the last time there was a plot line where people were running out of fuel 
was The Last Jedi, and everyone lost their minds about that plot line. I'm not hearing anyone complain about that plot line in The Mandalorian, so... That's because this plot line in The Mandalorian didn't last three hours. <laughs> They're too far away from us, sir. We can't speed up just a little bit. I mean, we don't... <laughs> you, you're you opening... You're, you're just baiting me. You're know, trying to get at me. Because, I mean... Hyperspace, go a little bit that way, light speed. Boop, come boop. right back this way, light speed. <laughs> you got them surrounded. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, they chase the raptor. They can't. Bo Katan gets in her ship, follows it to the nest, but stays high enough and fa- far enough away that it doesn't see her. She, I mean, really, the story is the whole point of the story is to show. Her leading the Mandalorians. Them both accepting her. I feel like uh, Paz Vizla needed to accept her. Um, and so he was kind of the stand-in for all of the Mandalorians, right? Right. And eventually he does. But also her knowing, I can do this. Even though these people aren't really my people. I mean, my people in the sense of my religion, my clan, my tribe. Which are also Mandalorians and I can lead them, Right. Yes, and uh, I I texted this to you, I think, when we decided we weren't going to film. I said, well, I felt like up until that point, I thought it was probably the strongest episode of the season for me, but it was also the shortest. And yeah. it was like it was like complete opposite vibe from the longest episode of the season, which we did not really enjoy. Now, I'm like, can't they figure out the formula of a long episode that's really good. I think they did that this week, though. This yeah, week was a true. good episode, and it was quite a bit longer. That's true. Um, I guess we can wrap up the Mandalorian storyline. They go. They rescued the kid. Kind of stupidly, it seemed. Like, no one follows the plan whatsoever. He's like, oh, there's heat signature. That's my son. I'm like, obviously, this is a nest. Those are baby pterodactyls. Um, but I can't remember what. Then they they fly away again. They one plot point I didn't quite understand was they kept saying, "Don't startle the mother; she'll just kill the boy." Right? They said that a few times, and then they startle the mother, and she just carries the boy around for longer. I'm like, oh, okay, that was. Unnecessary. Yeah. But they ended up saving... They saved the boy. It's it's supposed to, I think, show, like you said, pa- Paz Vizla and the rest of the Mandalorians, like, accepting, like, wow, Bo-Katan, mostly Bo-Katan, but also Mando, have um, risked their lives, you know, willing to sacrifice themselves for mm-hmm. um, the son. So, anyway, uh, I think that that is... And they brought back some of those giant creatures. Yeah. Well, I guess because they had the they mother brought back had died. The babies. Yeah. Are we going to see more of them? Are they still around? I think they're going to be riding those around at some point. That now that Boba has ridden the Rancor, I, anytime I see a big creature, I think to myself, the Mando's going to ride that thing at oh, some point. The Avatar way, huh? Yeah. But so the other only other two kind of significant things to me in this. Uh, episode from last week was obviously the flashback for Grogu, which we can talk about, but the other one was um, Bo-Katan talking with the armorer and divulging like, hey, what if I told you I saw a mythosaur? I've never heard of a mythosaur before. And the armorer's (laughs) like, oh, that's great. A lot of people have visions or dreams of that. She's like, no, this wasn't some sort of hallucination. It was real. Yeah. And I think it was either last week or the week before we got basically a good explanation of the waters of Mandalore, the living waters, used to not be deep. It was a super little shallow pool. And so that's why it was more of a gimmicky like, oh, it used to be the lair of the mythosaur, but it's just this little shallow cave in here Mm -hmm, now. mm -hmm. But with all the bombing from the Empire, it had like 
opened it up imploded a little bit and opened it up and there is a mythosaur in there that which is why maybe uh mando wasn't expecting to drop that you know drop like a rock into yeah. the it's not like she told him oh don't go out there's a giant ledge yeah yeah probably like a little not tourist trap but some sort of like ceremonial place right but anyway, she gets a new armor piece, pa- pauldron or whatever, and it's the the signet of the mythosaur, not yeah. the night owl. And Grogu gets a new thing too. Is he just gonna slowly get dressed in Mandalorian garb? I mean, I feel like how would he ever do a helmet? Because we've never seen a non-humanoid Mandalorian like the the Mandalorian helmet is a human head shape. Yeah. So, I mean, would they modify the helmet? Have little ear holes? Yeah, I don't know. Um, they could do ear holes and just have his ear sticking out the side. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, the, he so the has, flashback. He has, some, he has some trauma he's dealing with. He's got PTSD. Yeah. So we see a bunch of Jedi during Order 66, probably like three or four basically protecting grogu we don't i didn't see any other younglings there i mean they're basically like it's us protecting this little youngling grogu mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um and they say get him to Kellerin. right so we kind of know him as either he is the protector of the younglings like that tv show on disney plus or he was already kind of sh- shuttling kids out of there or shuttling people out right um, and so as soon as they said Kellerin, because I've seen that. Oh, did you know right away? I did. Yeah. Oh, Cause cool. I, I watched most of the episodes if they, I don't know if they've done more seasons, but whatever the, when the first season came out, I watched it with my kids and I just remembered that his name was Kellerin Beck. It's just like a little, what legends of the hidden temple kind of like physical game show activities, right? Yes. So this actor who played Jar Jar Ahmed best, he is his character, he's a Jedi Master character on yeah, this not, little Disney Plus show. Not Jar Jar anymore. He's a humanoid man. Yes. Yeah. And it's like a little kids obstacle course physical challenge game show hmm. where they have to do different things and they tie it into like the Force and being a Jedi and they have to solve puzzles and all this kind of stuff. And the whole premise is that Keller and Beck is this Jedi Master that is you know a teacher and teaches younglings and trains younglings and things like that so when they were like get him to kellerin i immediately thought that's not like a coincidence there's no way that they're name dropping kellerin well at first i thought maybe it would just be like a little easter egg and off screen get him to kellerin and they put him in the elevator and then that's the end of the flashback yeah uh uh-huh so the fact when the door opened and he showed up, I was like, oh, wow. They're like, <laughs> they like really went for that. That's awesome. Um, so I felt like it was a really cool moment to not only see Ahmed Best like in a live action Star Wars project again, but then also have, in my mind, kind of a really cool, significant little piece of lore now that his character is attached to. And it was, a I felt like a relatively good little action scene that we see him with his dual lightsabers, I was like, this is cool. Yeah. Um, I is in the game show. I heard someone say his lightsaber is purple. Does he wield a lightsaber in this kid show? I don't know that he ever ignites it, but I do I had heard or something, or I think when I rewatched like Star Wars Explained, his little video about Ahmed Best. I think he did say he said that he's like his lightsaber was supposed to be purple, but maybe he had already lost it at that point during Order sixty six or whatever. He we see him pick up a fallen yeah. Jedi's uh-huh. lightsaber. So I mean, um, but yes, his lightsaber is supposed to be purple. I liked he had a pretty unique fighting stance where he really redirected the bolts right back to him. I kind of like that, like very well, deliberate. The, he like calls himself like the sabered fist or something Uh or the sabered hand i don't remember but anyway um yeah so i thought that was cool and then when they're escaping i honestly then expected i expected him to die 
Did you expect him to die? Yeah, I thought for sure, uh, like on the platform or somehow. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like get get Grogu on a ship and get him out of here, but he stays back and exactly. ends up dying uh-huh. heroically. But the other the other Naboo guards stay behind. Yes, and so then the fact that they're like going through Coruscant and they end up swerving by that little park with the mountain with the, the highest mountain peak point, uh-huh where you know years and years later um our traitorous friend will uh eat some glowing popsicles <laughs> but um anyway yeah and then shows up like so in my mind i'm almost like the doors open to continue to see like grogu's backstory and like who Oh, yeah, I, they totally Who Kellerin takes him to? Does Kellerin train him more? Like, what's, you know, what happens after that? I'm interested. So do you want to explain the Jar Jar theory, or should we leave it at that? Because I think the TikTok you sent me was interesting and brought up some interesting points. Yeah, the, I mean, the gist of the Jar Jar story is that why would Kellerin Beck be working with and associating with Nabu guards? And obviously, Jar Jar is from Naboo. Um, and so the fact that he is working with him, he makes a comment to Grogu about, I don't know if he says, we, I have people that can help us or I have a friend that can help us, but el- alluding to, I have connections that can shelter us or hide us or whatever. And then the fact that he's working with, you know, Naboo soldiers are, you know, guardsmen. Yeah. And then when they reach the getaway ship, it's a very similar style to Padme's, you know, cruiser. Um, people are kind of had connected these dots of it's obviously very much hinting at some association with Naboo. And since it's odd med Beth, it just makes sense that that'd be the coolest cameo. Since he is the actor that portrayed Jar Jar in the prequels. It just it just is like, would wouldn't it be Jar Jar that his character <laughs> would be relying on? <laughs> and so I'm telling you, if they actually have Jar Jar in this, that would be wild. What but do you the think? Only, do you think oh, they would do that? The only thing that I don't know, and I don't know the timelines or the lore, but you know, Jar Jar is in one of the books about how like one of the Star Wars books that's canon. He's like a clown, basically, like a street performer, totally fallen from grace and disgraced um, at some point. Is it in like the Aftermath trilogy or mm-hmm, something mm-hmm, like that? Mm-hmm. And uh, that real fast here. Uh, okay. Because of his role... In abetting the rise of the Empire, Binks was once again exiled by his people. After the Battle of Endor and the rise of the New Republic, he performed in the streets of Theed as a clown who was popular with the children, but not so much with their parents. Yeah. So, the Gungans believed he helped with the surge of the Empire, which is true. And so he was outcast. Um, but he lives to the era of the New Republic. So, so he's I mean, al- so he's alive. He's alive in the, in the current Mando. timeline of the Mando. Yes, but obviously he would also be alive during the flashback scenes of Order sixty six, end of Episode three. Well, because the order Order sixty six, when this is all happening, you have to keep in mind Padme's alive. Uh huh. And Jar Jar is also alive, and Jar Jar is like a prominent member of the Naboo. Senate. Huh? And so he would have, but I, I, I guess I don't know what the connection would be or why Jar Jar would know Order 66 was happening or why he'd have some sort of connection to Grogu or yeah. Keller and Beck. Do you, okay, Do you th- it's been some time since the prequels. Time heals wounds. People, the prequels have had this resurgence of love ever since the sequel trilogy. I feel like the prequels, people are like, oh, those prequels aren't half bad. 
Um, do you think they would take this risk of bringing Jar Jar into the Mandalorian? Albeit in a flashback, I would assume not current day, but. I think it's unlikely, but I, I, I don't think it's a. Uh, I like the idea. I hope they do it. I like the idea. I think it's unlikely, but I don't think it's like absolutely not. They're not going to do it. And I also think that, you know, this is kind of Filoni's calling card anyway. This is what he did with the Clone Wars was he he smoothed over and supplemented the prequel movies so that it they it made them better. It kind of explained things or yeah. not retconning, but he would just um do things to flesh out characters and things like that that people had problems with in the prequels. And I guarantee you, if they have Jar Jar in this show, I have to, I mean, I just believe if that happens, he will not be comic relief. He will not be like some dumb character. Uh They're, They're going to try to basically rehab his image, I think. Yeah, oh yeah, I can see that. I think or, they'll give him something stupid to say. Right, right. I mean, it'll still be this. It'll be the authentic character. I feel like the the speech pattern, all of that will be the same. But I don't think that he he'll be portrayed as competent. Uh huh. That he knows what he's doing and he's doing something relatively heroic. That's what I think they would do yeah, if they I, did bring him back. I hope this. I hope to see him. We'll leave it at that. Or they bring him there and. He ignites his red lightsaber and he <laughs> impales Keller and Beck. And he says, you fool. <laughs> My apprentice right now is this em- new emperor of the galaxy. Man, could you imagine? Sith Jar Jar pulling all the strings the whole time, the puppet master. Let's get to this week's episode, Sean. Um this was episode six, I believe, called The Pirate. Um, can I just say from the get-go, great episode. But also, can I just say from the get-go, they Darth Mauled this guy. This pirate guy, whatever his name is, we finally Orion see him. Orion Shand or yeah. Orion Shard. I'm like, I like this guy. I like his ship. I like his pirates. I like him. He seems like a formidable foe. And then, oh, never mind. He's dead. They, I know there's other villains that need to be bigger and better. And we need Thrawn. We need Moff Gideon. We need those guys. I just get a little upset when they introduce these cool villains. And then they're just like, gone. I see what you're saying. I was going to say, I know that Carl Weathers, our high magistrate grief Karga is like a well-known, established actor. Wonder, I mean, Apollo Creed. That this man is accomplished. He director, can, huh? Director. Yes, I can. He directed last week, didn't he? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I cannot get over that for some reason. He is just goofy to me. <laughs> like the whole character is just goofy. It takes me out of it. Anytime he's in a scene, I'm like. What is this? <laughs> Why is he so weird? Yeah, he still has a bit of an odd, uh, not personality, but way of carrying himself about as an actor, it seems. Like, you can tell he's trying too hard. I th- It feels like he's trying too hard. And, I, and then I get into my head of, is he purposefully acting like that because Grief Karga is trying too hard? Or it's just Carl Weathers is trying too hard and then i get into my head and think i literally have zero percent acting skills (laughs) who am i to say any of this (laughs) and then i get in my head and think well but that's what the people demand of us honest reviews that's right that's right our takes on this star wars content and then i get in my head and i say i gotta share these thoughts with the people because that's how we get content and views okay so we gotta share this anyway um How many people live in Navarro? Is it less than 20? It's 29. (laughs) It's it's just insane. People of Navarro. Uh, Looks like there's about six households left. (laughs) Did they really uh, take over the town 
pla- I thought it was a plant. Anyway, town for the express purpose of drinking in that school building again. Yes, we'll take it over so we can drink in this place again, just can like the we, good old days. Can we just acknowledge, though, that it was said at some point when the New Republic pilot was trying to get Chorus on whatever to help out. It was like, oh, Navarro is just a small planet on the outer rim. But then when they show up, it's it, it's not that small. Yeah, It looks like a big planet. I mean, it maybe isn't as big as some others in the galaxy, but... It looks comparable to other planets. It looked like an Earth-sized planet. Uh huh. And you're telling me that High Magistrate Grief Karga is that the only civilization settlement on the entire planet? Listen, that's, that's the, the entire. That's, that's the, the entire problem population. With all of these Star Wars planets is showing other parts of the planet. It's like there's one city and one ecosystem and one climate. There's no variance on the planets, right? That's what I don't get. I'm like, and and it was, again, it was just goofy, bizarre, that the pirates are rain, bombarding the city and everyone's running. And then by the time he leads them all out like Moses, he's leaving, <laughs> leading them out of the city, just like stumbling. He's in front like, okay, I'm leading everybody. I'm like, bro, there are 18 people behind you. <laughs> Like, what? You didn't save anybody. Yeah, nothing happened. You had no and defenses like, and, whatsoever. And you walked a far way away from the city. None of the bombardment, they didn't see a, a pack of people walking out of the city. They just wanted to drink. They just wanted to drink at the school. So that was weird to me. Yeah. I, I, again, I don't understand what the purpose was. Was it just to... I thought... Anyway. It happened. Um, what, what else was I going to say? Oh, also, um, is IG-11 around anymore? <laughs> Are we still going on this thread? Did we completely forget about him? They, is that storyline gone? He doesn't need him anymore. He already got to Mandalore and, that, and did the atmosphere test or whatever. <laughs> so... <laughs> I okay, yeah. So that's it. We're not going to see it. That story pursued. Well, well that's, that's it. it. <laughs> well, he's cray cray. Um, I okay. mean, the statue has obviously been dismantled. I mean, the they basically vandalized. Yeah, the statue of a hero. To then destroy no it more. Um, he sends a message to Coruscant. Oh, wait, first. We didn't even talk about the. He sends it. He doesn't send it to Coruscant first. He sends it to, what was that planet? Did they tell us? Just a, a base, right? A squadron. It looks base. like Scarif. Yeah, it does. Um, and we get our old man, uh, from the New Republic and Zeb. Zeb. And when he first showed up, I thought to myself, I'm like, I I just immediately thought, well, that's just a that type of alien but a different person. And I'm like, no, that's like very similar to the voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was purposeful. Um, what, what type of creature are they? Let me look it up real fast. They're the original concept art for Wookiees. It's based right. off of yes. the Ralph McQuarrie concept art for the original trilogy for Chewbacca. Lasset. Alas, it. There's only two that we've seen. There's Zeb, and then do you know the other one? Zed. Zeb and Zed? No, sorry. Zeb. Am I saying that right? Zeb. Yeah. Yeah. And my second guess is my second guess is Zed. That they're twins, and they just one Zeb and one is Zed. No, it's the Jedi Master of Cal Kestis. Oh yeah, Jaro Tapal. Oh Jaro, how did you forget about him? That guy was actually pretty cool. Yeah, he was legit. Anyway, in the video game Jedi Fallen Order, the main character is a redheaded humanoid. His Jedi Master was a Lasset. 
purple guy who died in Order 66. Spoiler alert. So this character, Zeb, is from the animated show Rebels, which is great, and you should watch it because you're going to need to watch it for what's coming up soon in this show and the Ahsoka show. Um, yeah, he's a member of the Rebellion. Because we already got the Space Whales yep. foreshadowing Ezra. Now we've seen Zeb in live live action. Well, Thrawn was teased last season. Thrawn was te- teased last season. I mean, they're definitely moving us that direction. Yeah. So then the message then goes to Coruscant. But because they're not... Well, then uh, Empire Lady comes in, sticking her nose in the things, and totally derails the whole plan. I can't like a character less than I like that character. I know, right? She's a good... Yeah, she doesn't I'm like, well. get out of here. Like, who are you? You don't just walk into people's offices like you've been clearly been eavesdropping. Oh, by the way, can I get you something from downstairs? Oh, what are you talking about, Super Secret? Oh, Navarro, they're not a member of the New Republic. Because she knows... She knows what was happening on that planet. I mean, remember, this planet was where the cloning facility was, and the Empire had an outpost there. So something big happened there, and she knows about it. Yep. She's trying to sweep it under the rug. So. Yep. If only they had a new New Republic Ranger, Cara Dune, to <laughs> help out. Uh, too soon. Anyway, so... Uh, the pilot then goes to track is R five tracks them, right? And that's how he gets to the Mandalorian covert. And th- this is an interesting plot line here. Bothered me a bit. They were like, You've now found us. This is a secret spot. Either we have to kill you or we have to move. We can't have anyone ever know where we are. We've seen that several times throughout the show. We saw it in the first place on Navarro and then on that uh, underground city or that city, but the under part of the city and Book of Boba Fett. And now here on this desert planet, then later the end of the show when. Uh, why can't I think of his name right now? The high magistrate great gives partner. them the land. They're like, oh, great. Yes, we will take it. Yeah, well, I think they kind of explain that as, I think the, either the armorer or somebody, maybe even Mando, made some sort of speech. Remember when they were holding the hammers and saying we should go? And uh-huh, uh-huh. during that, someone said something about, like, maybe it's time for us to, like, live in the light again. Okay, like, not okay. be secretive anymore and be public. Uh, so I, I think they explain that with some sort of like throwaway line but um what i was more kind of interested by was the armorer who seems to be rule follower number one all up in people's business sending them on cross galactic missions to go redeem yourself all of a sudden is like you know what take the helmet off take it off i've had a change of heart (laughs) <laughs> we're not going to take ours off. We're still can, doing our thing. You can take yours off, though. But you you be the one that kind of, like, straddles the line, kind of the bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, oh, okay. We can't get any more converts to our religion, so we need you to be the cool person. Yeah. So that was interesting. And I also feel like with that, there, there's there's a lot of gray area to me right now on man the mandalorians what their objective is who's leading them that was kind of cleared up this time of like okay it's time to live in the light and time to retake mandalore but i'm like they're getting behind bo katan but din jaren still has the dark saber like what when and is what's that there gonna... what's there to retake no one is there yeah just go. Just go. <laughs> I know. If you went right now, you can have. Fine. <laughs> so, 
So um, that's what I, I guess I'm just like I'm I'm curious to see how that continues to evolve over the I think that that's obviously the main plot line that is going to yeah, be driving yeah. the rest of the season is the Mandalorians retaking Mandalore. But I'm I'm also curious about this dynamic between Mando and Bo because I'm like, when is it going to is there going to ever be friction again that he oh, has the dark saber? I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, what's that going to look like? I don't know. Yeah. Um Anyway, so the mm-hmm. the the other little uh, this episode kind of left us on a cliffhanger. Cuz at the end here our New Republic pilot, well we've I heard wish- whispering throughout the few episodes about Moff Gideon. Maybe They've on been trial. Leaving breadcrumbs. Yeah, maybe not on trial. Maybe got away. But it's just rumors, right? Yes. Now we learn they've been top secret. The truth is top secret classified. And uh, our friend finds a Lambda class shuttle that's been breached. The hole has been breached. And they figure out that it was the one carrying Moff Gideon. And he's been his body wasn't there. And there's what Beskar in the ship hole? Is that what it was? So is it Moff? Is it the first order or whoever leaving trying to blame the Mandalorians for this? Well Or does someone else have Beskar? One, I'm glad that they said there's Beskar in here because the visual that I was looking at on the TV, I'm like, I don't know what I'm looking at. I don't know. What, what is that? A little piece of something? I, I'm like, that's Beskar? I can't tell. I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it it's – well, it made me think it's either uh, – well, I guess my first thought was there are other Mandalorians that are maybe working with the Empire. Working with Moff Gideon. Oh, I'm like, where so? did Moff Gideon even get the dark saber in season one to begin with? I'm like, is Moff Gideon a Mandalorian? <laughs> he just doesn't wear the armor. <laughs> right, that may be a stretch, but that's true. How did he get the dark saber? They've never answered maybe, that question. Maybe he's leading Death Watch, and there's a faction of Mandalorians that are aligned oh, with the wow, Imperial yeah. Remnant. Yeah. Hmm. Who have a different agenda than Bo Katan would have. Right. Well, it's an interesting setup they've left us. Are we we're halfway I think that was the halfway halfway mark, right? Of the season. Yeah. Um so we'll see. I interesting. I didn't think about Death Watch. I mean, Actually, I thought we might, I thought we might was... be more than halfway through. How many episodes? Isn't it usually like eight or nine episodes a season? Uh, this is the fifth episode, and it's eight. So yeah, we are. We only have three left. That mm-hmm. wasn't the mid season. So I guess overall, how do you feel about Moff Gideon still being kind of the big bad of this season? So he wasn't really the big bad of season one until the very end, last episode. And then season two, kind of the same thing. He was a little bit more of the bad guy. Um, I don't know. I guess I think there's going to be payoff. We've had these empire run-ins that haven't been explained yet, like on um, not a Mandalore, but on um, Bo-Katan's planet and out in space. Right, they ran into the empire. So I always thought that was Thrawn, but now I guess I'm thinking. Back to Moff Gideon, it'd be fine. I, I like the things they're leaving for us. Um, so yeah, I I think he's a great villain. So I don't. Um, I guess what I'm trying to say is I want to see more of him. If he's going to be the bad guy, let's see him. 
but I like kind of this anticipation of who is it, right? Yeah, I I, I agree a hundred percent with you. I also find it kind of interesting, and in my personal opinion is this episode, the fifth episode of an eight episode season, is the first episode that I feel like kind of gives a hook of, ooh, like okay, so what's gonna happen? <laughs> That's a good point, right? And um. So, and again, so I'm like, I kind of am thinking to myself, man, we're five episodes into the eight episode season. And now I'm finally seeing like, oh, okay. Like, this is like what we're working towards. And I, we haven't seen the last three episodes, so it's not, I'm not going to judge it yet. But I'm curious if by the end of the season, I'll think, I wish they would have done that hook in episode three. Instead of episode five. Yeah, the only other real hook they gave us was when she saw the mythosaur. Yeah. All the other times they have it, they've just kind of been like, oh, that was the end, you know? Right. So anyway. Um, but I felt like the last two episodes have been really good. I've yeah, really I, enjoyed I them. Um huge improvements from our weird Dr. Pershing backstory episode yeah which people liked <laughs> i don't quite understand that is so interesting but in any case i'm excited for the last three episodes and to see what our boy moff gideon's up to which what mandalorian faction is helping him out yeah or if they just left beskar there to try to frame the mandalorians that's true also um not to go off topic but we need to review the bad batch season that just ended or it's about to end. So we to gotta... do that, it would require me to watch any of it, <laughs> which I have not done. Well, we probably should, because it's what the people want. I'll start watching it then. I mean, we watched the first season. I watched the whole thing, and it had some good moments. I don't know why I've been so just not interested, but I don't know. I got to give it a chance. Well, uh, that's all we've got. If you guys have any comments, if you think we're going to see Jar Jar soon, or Sith Lord Jar Jar, or some other person from Naboo, Boss Nass, maybe, uh, let us know. In the <laughs> that's who. That's who we. That's who we need. Let us know in the comments who you think is here to save Grogu and Keller and Beck, and uh, also let us know. Um. What's the question from this week? Is it Thrawn? Is it Moff Gideon? Is it someone else? Are we going to see Thrawn this season? Or was, are they saving him for Ahsoka? Let us know. Sean? How do we end this podcast again? The same way we always do, Joseph. By trying to take over the world. And with that... No, that's not what we do. Uh, this is the way... We have spoken... We'll see you next week on the Dads of Dagobah. Bye. See ya.